Mmm, bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? One can simply never have too much bacon in their life. That's why I'm making two lots of bacon for lunch. How you doing? Welcome to the channel. And I'm having bacon for lunch with eggs and other stuff. And I wanted to talk to you about the bullshit that we have been fed for the last 40 years about nutrition. Hey, Pace. My dog down here's just come in because he can smell bacon. Because he loves bacon too. But you can't have bacon because you're a dog and it's got stuff in it's not good for dogs. Mostly salt and stuff. Anyway, uh, the bullshit we've been fed just goes so long back. And we are now reaping the, not the rewards, the, almost like a punishment for the bad nutrition we've had over the last 40 years. Now today, people my age in their 50s have a higher rate, 66% I think is the stat I read the other day, of heart disease, cancer, diabetes type 2, Alzheimer's, there's a huge list of illnesses. And why is that? Well, the old fashioned food we used to eat, which was bacon and eggs and you know, breakfast every morning, we got told that fat was bad for us. We got told that cholesterol is bad for us. Do you know that there are more people that suffer from low cholesterol, not having enough of the right cholesterol, that causes problems than people that have high cholesterol? High cholesterol, we need cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually really important. We've been taught that cholesterol is bad. I'll tell you something else interesting about cholesterol. I got my cholesterol measured the other day from the doctor, and I got a phone call saying, hey, your cholesterol's too high, we need to look at medication. Inter interventive, intervention? Interventive medication. I'm not quite sure how to say that. You know what I mean. I said, that's fine. You know what's more about LDL? They say it's a bad cholesterol, but in fact, LDL is made up of two types of cholesterol in itself. Well, two types of LDL. You've got the, the very tiny molecules, like the really small one, and the one that's made up of the very large molecules. And they don't tell you which one it is, because they don't know. The only way to test that is a, well, there's an outfit in Germany that tests that. And it's so expensive that they're not going to do that. So they just put you on statins and try and get your cholesterol under control, which actually doesn't need to be under control as much as you may think. Cholesterol is designed to, it's like a sticking plaster. If you get a tear in your artery, it'll cover it up. We've got cholesterol through our whole bodies. We need cholesterol. So what have we been eating that's wrong in the last... I'm just going to go out of here because it's smoky. And uh, I haven't got my um, windows open so I can get some fresh air. Plus it's nice to talk to you outside in the garden. Garden? It's a mess. So they, they tell us, you know, uh, all these things that we should and shouldn't be eating over the last years. And I've grown up hearing it from so many people. You know, oh, don't put so much cream on your porridge or on your coffee. Bullshit. Cream's good for you. What is bad for us? The number one poison is sugar. I'll say that again. Sugar. Why? Because sugar is shit. We naturally never got sugar. The only way we ever got it was when fruit was in season. At the end of the season, like, would be in maybe our autumn when it's on the trees ripening. There's sugar in that. So we might eat it for a very short time of the year. But the rest of the year, we weren't eating a lot of sugar. You get a little bit out of berries. You might raid honey occasionally, but it wasn't a staple diet. So we're not designed... To have a lot of sugar. What does sugar do to us? Well, it makes us become insulin resistant and it makes us get really, really bad inflammation because it feeds that. Sugar feeds cancer. That's what cancer lives off, sugar. You know how much sugar you need in your blood? You need one teaspoon of sugar. That's all you need. Think about that. So if you put a teaspoon of sugar in your tea, straight away you've doubled the amount of sugar in your body correct. If you double the amount of salt in your body, sodium, you'll die. If you double the amount of potassium in your body, you'll die. That's what they use, the, the lethal injections, potassium. With sugar, you also die, but just much slower. You get diabetes type 2, heart disease, it feeds cancer, it causes all sorts of inflammation. Inflammation is behind all disease. Like, just about all disease you can think of has somewhere there's inflammation going on, and sugar creates that. Okay, so what we have is we have today a lot of obesity, which we never used to have. If you look at a photo back in the 30s or the 40s, you'll see people, they're all slim. You might get one fat person and go, gee, that's fat. Today, you look at a photo, and they're all fat. You see one skinny person, you go, why is that person so skinny? That person's probably on the right sort of diet. 
One of the best diets in the world is the Mediterranean diet. Very good. Also, the traditional Japanese diet is a good diet. But our Western diet of lots of refined carbohydrate, bread, toast, pasta. How do you say? Pasta or pasta? What's the right way? Pasta or pasta? I get it mixed up. White rice. Um, bag bagels. Uh, waffles, pancakes, all that stuff that we love to munch on actually just straight away turns back into sugar in our body and causes all the problems we have. We become insulin resistant and we actually don't then get the nutrition from the food we're supposed to eat. Let's go back inside and eat bacon because bacon's good. I love bacon. I'll eat bacon until the cows come home. And you know what? I got taught when I was younger that too much of this stuff and too many eggs would be bad for me. That was a lie. And you've probably been fed it too. God, that tastes good. Hell yes. And what I love about bacon, it's the fat. I love the fat. Mm. A nice bit of bacon that's crunchy with the fat. Like this. Hey, I've got some good news for you guys. The ketogenic diet says that you can eat lots of fat. Heaps. Mmm. I'd like to keep talking, but I want to start eating bacon. It's addictive. Right, I'll stop there. So what you need in your diet, if you really want to pair yourself up, is to shift to a ketogenic diet. Most of you won't. It's not a fad diet. It's nothing new. It's how we once used to eat. Pretty much. And what it does is, it tricks the body into burning fat for fuel, rather than carbohydrate and sugar. The body thinks that it it's, needs to feed itself from your own energy in your body, which is your fat, which is stored as energy. Today, you don't do that because you're constantly putting sugar and eating all the time. You should only be eating once or twice a day. That's another lie, three meals a day. If you're underweight, yes, but you need to have a time period where you're not eating. You need to have at least 16 hours of a, a day where you're not putting anything in your mouth at all. So your body can go into a state of autophagy and burn all the rubbish that's in your body that's becoming either cancer or a wart or a growth in your skin or something. It will actually chew all that stuff and reuse it and eat it. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. In the meantime, eat bacon because bacon's bloody good. Mm. Eggs are good. They taught me when I was young that eggs will give you cholesterol. Problems. Bullshit. Yes, there's a lot of cholesterol in eggs. I eat four eggs a day. Now, I'm not having a heart attack. Now, I used to have a shit diet. I used to eat a lot of sweet stuff. And I paid the price. I got very sick. That's why I did my own research and found out today that combining the ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting will power you up. And I shouldn't be talking while I'm eating. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I do, I apologise, it's rude. I won't eat any more. I'll try not to. I have a strong addiction to bacon. Anyway, that's a little bit of my spin on nutrition. But hearing it from me is not going to validate much because I'm just a filthy pig hunter living in an old farmhouse um, who does a bit of hunting and fishing and has a very simple life. You need to hear it from someone who's got the certificate. That's why I'm going to be having some talks with Dr. Glenn Davies from the Taupo Medical Centre we we'll pretty much say what I've been saying now. Um, but hearing it from a doctor will be more believable than hearing it from me. I mean, God, with a name like Clay Tall Stories, who's going to believe anything I say? That was a random vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to get back to eating bacon. And if you are overweight or you are sick or your health is not working out, then seriously look at the ketogenic diet. Have a good look at it. Google Dr. Berg. Dr. Eric Berg on YouTube. Brilliant doctor. Over a million subscribers. I don't know how many he's got. He's got heaps. But for a good reason. He knows what he's talking about. Check it out. And be good. If you can't be good, then be careful. And remember, bacon's good. Bacon's not good, mate.